After Old Ning met and was reassured that his granddaughter is in safe hands, he turned to leave. Yi Yi immediately waved her hands, calling to her grandfather, saying, Okay, Grandpa, you can just go first. We will return when the competition begins in a few days. Lin, beside Yi Yi, also gave his farewell. Old Ning, who by now had realized that with Lin here, there should be no need to worry, still felt that something was off about Lin. He decided that he had to go back and ask Bai Shen about it. Just as Old Ning was surprised to see Yi Yi with Lin, Lin was also surprised because he never even imagined that Xia Jing Academy's principal was Yi Yi's grandpa. After some time, Lin goes to the officer's resting room, which Ni Xiong talked about before. On the screen in front, the system shows the facilities of the resting room. The first thing this can do is speed up recovery and quickly eliminate fatigue. The second option is officer's skill training grounds, where mental recovery and skill training speed up. The third is officer's teleportation array, which can teleport to several specified locations. The last facility is exchange of military merit, with this military merit can be used to buy corresponding materials. Lin was surprised to see that this resting room has this many facilities. Lin thought for a second and decided to use the exchange of military merit. When he clicked on the option, exchange of military merit on the screen, the surroundings immediately changed and the system showed the things that were on display to be sold to Lin. The first thing on the display was anti-curse potion, which increases curse resistance by 50 merit points per bottle within 30 minutes. The second thing was dungeon escape talisman that lets you escape from any dungeon instantly. This required 100 merit points per card. The third thing on the display was elementary recovery potion, which heals all injuries and restores 500 points of mental power upon use. Its cooldown is one minute, and 100 merit points are required per bottle. From all those things, that talisman sounded useful to Lin. He thought that two of these talismans should be good for emergencies. Lin bought two of them with 200 merit points. Lin now understands that the purpose of the military merit is similar to the points in Xiajing Academy, and if one spends too much merit, their rank will be lost. So, it's better to save a little merit. After buying it, Lin left the officer's resting room and goes to meet Yi Yi. He gives one talisman to her so that in some dangerous situation, she could escape safely. Yi Yi happily took it and thanked him. Yi Yi was rich, so she probably has tons of these things. But every time Lin gives her something, she gets too happy. While they were talking, suddenly someone calls Yi Yi. The one who calls her was Mo Yun, the second waifu. Yi Yi calls her Sister Yun, showing that she knows Mo Yun personally. When Mo Yun saw Lin with Yi Yi, she asked her if Lin is her. Before she could complete her words, embarrassed Yi Yi stopped her. While blushing, Yi Yi said, Sister Yun, just tell me what's going on. Mo Yun throws something towards Yi Yi, and Yi Yi grabbed it. She asked Mo Yun, What's this? Mo Yun told her that it is a destination teleportation stone. She gives two destination teleportation stones that send one to a design destination. Mo Yun told them that she has been searching for the battlefield Ghost King lately and she will ask them to help her in fighting it if she finds it. Lin thought that she is talking about the battlefield Ghost King, who is to drop the Nirvana Crystal. While leaving, Mo Yun confirms that the battlefield Ghost King will definitely drop the Nirvana Crystals in the range of 3 to 5 or 6. Mo Yun said, I only want one of them, so I will give you as many of them as possible, and this benefits you too. Yi Yi said, Sister Yun, don't worry, we will help you. After Mo Yun left, Yi Yi looked at Lin and said, Lin, it's impossible for me to defeat it, so I think Sister Yun has chosen you as the helper. Lin replied, I'm only level 24, so I might not be able to defeat a level 38 world-class boss right at this moment. Yi Yi suggested, Lin, we should clear some dungeons and level up so that we can help Sister Yun. Lin checked his cooldown talisman and told her that he has eight more uses of his cooling talisman. She also checked hers and told Lin that she has nine more uses left. They decided to rest for today and go into the dungeons tomorrow. Then, the next day, when Lin and Yi Yi were going to the Dragon Frontline dungeon, a boy saw Yi Yi's beauty and commented, This girl is so pretty. Another guy pulled back that boy and shouted, Shut up, you idiot! He pointed at Lin and said, That hunter who is next to the girl is a beast, so don't even think about approaching her. When Yi Yi heard them, she was impressed. She said, Lin, your performance on the battlefield yesterday was recognized. Now everyone recognizes you and doesn't want to go against you. Lin told her not to mind them and to concentrate on the dungeon. Then, 
Both of them entered the dungeon. Inside the dungeon, Lin summoned his skeleton warriors. The quantity and attributes of Lin's skeletons had been increased once again, and the efficiency had been greatly accelerated as well. Right now, Lin is a level 25 necromancer with an average of 950 strength, endurance, and agility, and his spirit is at 5300. This time they reached the boss in less than four hours. He was using his Thanatos Scythe, which is level 25 at the moment. Before the boss monster fully awakened, Lin ordered his soldiers to attack it. He said, Sorry, big guy, but I will have to test my new skills on you. After some time when the boss monster got killed, Lin goes to him to try his new skill. He raised his scythe and used the evolution skill of the scythe to record the soul of the boss monster. Suddenly, a big green shadow comes out of the boss monster's body and gets absorbed into the Thanatos scythe. For killing the boss monster and clearing the dungeon, Lin got another hell difficulty dagger. Yi Yi was shocked to see another hell level dagger and asked Lin if he could give her this one too, mentioning that she has a use in mind for it. Lin told her that since her invisibility skill helped him and there are other rewards, she can have it. Yi Yi was very happy to get another hell level weapon. When they exited the dungeon, Lin again used the skeleton armor to cover both of them, and just like the previous two times, this time again, a man was present to cause trouble. Lin saw that in front of the dungeon, some soldiers who are wearing golden colored armor were standing, telling everyone to move aside. They were making space for a carriage to go. When they saw Lin and Yi Yi in front of the dungeon, a soldier came towards Lin to move him aside. But because of the skeleton armor, that soldier was unable to touch or even push back Lin. That soldier was shocked to see that Lin isn't even moving a bit. Another soldier tried to push Yi Yi, shouting, Get out of here! You are ruining the red carpet of His Highness. But before that man could touch Yi Yi, a sword attacked that soldier's hand. That soldier was so scared to see that sword attack that he fell on the ground. The one who swung that sword at the soldier was Lin's skeleton warrior. Yi Yi told Lin to be careful because those people must be from ancient Rome's holy see. Lin said, I know, and told her not to worry. Lin just wanted to test if his skeleton's strength is comparable to theirs or not. But before something happens, or they fight someone from that golden carriage, ordered all the soldiers to stop. When all those soldiers heard that person's command, they all stood back and saluted towards the carriage. Then, a young man in luxurious shining armor stepped out of the carriage and walked on the red carpet that was laid for him. The armor he was wearing was not an ordinary golden armor. One could tell that it was made by a professional blacksmith, and all his jewelry was made by alchemists. It's an attractive set not as good as the Hell Difficulty one, but definitely better than the Nightmare Gold set. When he comes out of the carriage, his attention is drawn to Yi Yi's beauty. He was shocked, thinking how there can be such beauty in the world. This new man is also attracted to our main character's waifu, so you can guess where it's going to end. He scolded soldiers who tried to push back Yi Yi and ordered him to back off. Then, he goes to Yi Yi and said, I apologize on behalf of his underling who was rude just now. He introduced himself as Rutgers, a level 32 fire warrior from ancient Rome's Holy See. When the people hear that he is a fire warrior, they all were amazed. A guy from the crowd said that the ancient Rome's Holy See is religious and claims to have inherited the power of the gods. So if this warrior inherited the power of Vulcan, then it is too cool. But the people of Shensia who have witnessed Lin's power don't give a care about some stupid legendary Vulcan warrior class. A guy from Shensia comes out and said, this legendary warrior is nothing more than a class with a fire attribute. He said the guy who killed nearly 10,000 abyss hounds can be called powerful in his comparison. On the other hand, Rutgers, who thinks that he is some kind of main character, approaches Yi Yi and said, Beautiful lady, I wonder if you would honor me by accepting my invitation to get to know each other. Yi Yi feels very uncomfortable with him, and that can be seen from her face. Lin also saw that and comes to her rescue. He stands in front of Yi Yi and said, There is no need. You are not worthy of her. Rutgers was taken aback when Lin suddenly intervened while he was talking to Yi Yi. Rutgers replies to Lin, saying, You're only level 25, so I should be more qualified than you. But when Rutgers sees that Lin still doesn't back down, he calls him ignorant. Rutgers decides to humiliate Lin. He says it's normal to be so narrow-minded since Lin's level is so low. He asks Lin if he knows what dungeon he's going to clear. He shouts, I'm going to solo clear the outpost sentry hell difficulty and obtain that legendary title. He shouts like that, thinking that now everyone would know he is going to clear a dungeon in hell difficulty and Lin would feel ashamed of his level. 
he looks at Yi Yi and says, Beautiful lady, just wait till I finish clearing it and get the title. I'll invite you once again then. When Yi Yi hears him, she couldn't control herself and starts to laugh. Not only Yi Yi but all the hunters who have gathered start to laugh at him. Rutgers is confused about what's going on and why everyone is laughing. Suddenly, a soldier comes running to Rutgers and tells him that the legendary title has already been taken. That soldier points at Lin and tells Rutgers that he is the one who took the title. Rutgers gets very angry when he hears that. He was angry because the one he was trying to humiliate humiliated him instead. He orders all his soldiers to gather around him. Then he makes a plan on what he is going to do. When a soldier hears Rutgers' plan, he gets very nervous and asks if they are really going to do this because this is Shengxia's territory, and the majority of the professionals here right now are part of Shengxia. If anything happens, it might be really dangerous for them. Rutgers tells them not to worry, they just have to be discreet about it. He looks at Lin and Yi Yi and, while laughing, says, Even if they die, others will only assume that they died inside the dungeon. While Rutgers and his party are making their super plan, which is going to be a flop. Lin goes to Yi Yi and tells her not to care about them and to continue dungeon clearing. Yi Yi agrees with him, and both of them enter the Dragon Post dungeon. When both of them enter the dungeon, Rutgers starts what he planned before. He immediately takes out a dungeon tracking scroll and uses it on Lin. This dungeon tracking scroll can track people who have entered a dungeon. After tracking Lin's dungeon, Rutgers also enters the dungeon with all his soldiers. When people see him entering the dungeon with his full party, they get suspicious. Didn't Rutgers say he'll solo clear? So why is he bringing his whole party in? A guy also noticed that Rutgers used to scroll just now. While Alin and Yi Yi were clearing the dragon frontline post dungeon, suddenly Rutgers and his soldiers also appear there. Rutgers smiles like a psycho and says, You didn't expect us to find you, did you? He takes out a teleportation ceiling scroll and says, Lin, I heard that you solo cleared this dungeon and took away the title. Then I guess I don't have a choice left. If you don't die, I won't be able to get the title. He activates the teleportation ceiling scroll and seals the dungeon. Yi Yi informs Lin that Rutgers is using a teleportation ceiling scroll and their escape talisman doesn't work anymore. Rutgers, with an arrogant tone, asks, Are you despairing now? Are you scared? Terrified? He says this is the price for angering the Vatican of ancient Rome. He looks at Yi Yi and says, Don't fret, beautiful lady. I will not kill you so easily. I have a feeling that you'll make a wonderful story. Yi Yi doesn't like him a bit, but now she hates him to the core. Rutgers thought he won the game and can now get both the title and the waifu. But he underestimated our main character too much. When Lin hears all his trash talk, he starts to laugh at Rutgers. When Rutgers sees Lin laughing in this situation where he is about to die, he gets confused. He couldn't understand how Lin can laugh at this moment. He asks Lin what he is laughing at. Lin summons his Thanatos scythe and calls back all the skeleton soldiers that were clearing the dungeon. He says, if he can't teleport out of here because of the scroll, that means Rutgers also can't leave, right? Suddenly, loud roars come from Lin's back, which scares Rutgers and his soldiers. Rutgers sees hundreds of skeleton soldiers coming their way. The whole skeleton army stops right behind Lin. Then Lin starts to walk towards Rutgers. He says, Know your enemy and know yourself. Then you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. Lin tells Rutgers, You came walking to death on your own two feet because you don't know my profession and skills. Rutgers was a little scared after seeing Lin's skeleton army. But he thought that with his legendary profession, he could easily destroy those skeletons. He says, Lin, do you want to kill me with those shabby skeletons? I am someone who has the legendary profession, a Vulcan warrior. To intimidate Lin, Rutgers immediately uses his skill Vulcan body. Rutgers' blonde hair turns red, and the golden armor he was wearing gets upgraded to black armor. Fire is flowing underneath his feet as if he is controlling them. A long sword made of fire appears in his hand. He shouts, Lin, look. This is my skill Vulcan body. As in this state, all his attributes and skill attack power are increased by three times, his damage taken is reduced by 300%, and he is immune to all control skills. He arrogantly announces that there is no one stronger than him. Just as Lin expected from a legendary profession, those skill effects are indeed quite strong. But Lin doesn't care about any of that. He says, Rutgers, I accept you became somewhat strong, but your party members don't have the same skill do they? 
Lin uses his slow curse on them. It does not work on Rutgers because his skill makes him immune to all control skills, but his soldiers don't have anything like that, and they all get tied by curse chains. Immediately after Lin used the slow curse skill, all the skeleton warriors charge at Rutgers' soldiers. Rutgers was surprised by the slow curse, and all his soldiers start to panic when they see the skeleton soldiers coming their way. When Rutgers realizes that it's a curse, he tells support to quickly undo it. Rutgers tries to stop the skeleton warriors from reaching his soldiers and buy them some time. But when he attacks a skeleton warrior with his long sword, the skeleton warriors easily stop his sword. Rutgers is too shocked, thinking, how are these skeletons so strong? While Rutgers was struggling to defeat a single skeleton warrior, all the other skeleton warriors reach Rutgers' soldiers. When a tank comes forward to defend his teammates with a shield, the skeleton warriors easily destroy his shield, cutting him down. The skeleton warrior uses Ray's strike and attacks, sending that soldier flying. Other soldiers get scared when they see the skeleton warrior's strength. They all realize that it's over, and they are going to die by Lin's skeleton soldiers. When Rutgers, who was still struggling to defeat a skeleton warrior, saw that the other skeleton warriors have reached his soldiers, he decided to go and help them. But it was already too late, and before he could even move, all his soldiers met the Death Reaper in front of the skeleton warriors. After they all died, Lin looks at Rutgers and says, There's only a stupid fool left. How convenient. Rutgers was very angry at Lin for killing all his soldiers. He shouted, I'll kill you. I'll definitely kill you. Lin said, Rutgers, you've come at the right time because I was looking for a place to try out my new skill. Lin raised his Thanatos scythe and used the evocation skill. When he used the skill, all the surroundings got covered by green flame and the soul of the boss monster, Dragon Guardian, came out. Lin said, Rutgers, didn't you say you were going to solo clear hell difficulty? So now, try fighting the boss alone. When Rutgers saw the Dragon Guardian in front, he started to shake in fear. The Dragon Guardian was ten times bigger than Rutgers. Rutgers could not understand how Lin summoned the hell level boss monster. He asked Lin how it was possible for him to summon the hell difficulty boss. However, the Dragon Guardian was not there for him to interrogate. Without giving Rutgers a chance to prepare, the Dragon Guardian attacked him with its long sword. Rutgers tried to defend using his fire sword and Vulcan body. But the Dragon Guardian's attack was so strong that Rutgers could not even last a second and went flying. With a solid impact, he hit a giant rock that also cracked in half. Rutger's hair and armor changed back to normal because the Vulcan body he was so proud of was destroyed in one hit. At that moment, Rutgers realized the strength of the boss in hell difficulty. He was seriously injured and was out of mana and stamina. Now, he was unable to escape, and in front of him was the Dragon Guardian, which raised its sword again to attack. Seeing that Rutgers was scared to death, as a last resort, he tried to scare Lin using his background. He yelled, Lin, you can't kill me. I am the Holy Son of God. If you kill me, you will die. But Lin didn't give a damn about Rutger's background. He looked at Rutger's with his cold-blooded eyes. And at that moment, Rutger's realized that he had provoked the wrong person. The Dragon Guardian swung its giant sword and killed Rutger's mercilessly. In that attack, only Rutger's golden armor remained. Seeing Rutger's end, Yi Yi said, I didn't expect that an asshole like him, who only looks down on other people, would know how to beg for his life in the face of death. Yi Yi asked Lin if he was afraid, since Rutgers and all his soldiers were from the Vatican of ancient Rome. Lin replied with one word, no. Hearing that from him, Yi Yi smiled and said, No matter what happens, I'll stay by your side, Lin. She asked Lin about the Vulcan set equipment and what they should do with it. Lin told her to keep it for now and continue clearing the dungeon. They continued the dungeon raid. On the other side, at ancient Rome's Vatican headquarters, a bright light shone in the sky, indicating that Rutgers was killed. All the Vatican members started panicking upon seeing that light. A junior priest told others to quickly inform the Pope. At the same time, at Shenxia Academy, Old Ning went to meet Bai Shen and Meng Anwen, who were having tea. When Bai Shen saw the angry Old Ning approaching them, Bai Shen said, What a rare sight to see you here, Old Ning. But what's with that expression? Did someone anger you? Old Ning sat on the empty chair and angrily asked Bai Shen why he gave his granddaughter a task at the Yuan battlefield. Bai Shen told him that all this is nonsense. Lin Moyu is a sensible and outstanding individual. Why would he go around flirting? Hearing that, Old Ning calmed down a little, and, while drinking tea, 
asked Bai Shen if Lin could be trusted, because Lin claimed that he could bring Yi Yi to clear the hell difficulty. Bai Shen told him to see for himself when they come back. Sometime later, Lin and Yi Yi came out of the Dragon Frontline Dungeon. Now Lin is a level 26 necromancer, and Yi Yi is a level 23 assassin. Yi Yi told Lin that her cooldown talisman needs to charge up again, so she is planning to head back first and submit her task. She asked him what he is going to do. Lin told her that he would be going back too since the competition is coming up, and he will take this time to sell the equipment as well. Then both of them returned to Shenxia Academy using the teleportation circle. Lin immediately goes to the trade center and sells all the equipment he collected in the dungeon. He sells all of them for 20 million and leaves. However, the trading center's manager was too shocked, wondering who this big shot is that sells all equipment from the hell difficulty. Leaving there, Lin contacted Bai Shen through the communication device. Bai Shen, not expecting a call from Lin so soon, asked him why he returned so early. Lin informed him that he had completed his task. Bai Shen was shocked to hear that Lin had already completed his task and asked him to come over quickly. Lin immediately went to meet him, and Bai Shen was amazed to see that Lin was already level 26. Wondering about his level, Bai Shen asked Lin how he leveled up so quickly. Lin told him that he had been clearing dungeons non-stop. Bai Shen commented that even if Lin had been solo clearing nightmare difficulty dungeons, the leveling rate shouldn't be this fast. Lin clarified that he was not clearing nightmare difficulty but hell difficulty and with someone else. Meng Anwen proudly said, Didn't I say that he could solo clear hell difficulty? And that someone else is probably old Ning's precious granddaughter. Lin became nervous, wondering how they knew all that. Bai Shen asked Lin if this was true which meant Lin also got the title. Lin activated the Dragon War King title to show Bai Shen. Bai Shen now understood that Lin was more capable than he thought, praising Lin for his great performance. Bai Shen asked if the cooldown talisman was all used up, and Lin confirmed. Lin then showed Bai Shen the items he collected and mentioned that he couldn't find an alchemist, so he would trouble Bai Shen. Bai Shen told Lin that charging up the cooldown talisman isn't an easy thing to do, but since Lin's performance was good, he would help him. Bai Shen said he would notify Lin once it's done charging up. Lin thanked him, and Bai Shen asked if Lin had heard about the competition. Lin confirmed, and Bai Shen told him that the competition is held once every five years, and this year, Shenxia Empire would be hosting it. The competition would happen in ten days. With a serious expression, Bai Shen told Lin that not only did he want Lin to participate, but he wanted him to become the champion. Lin agreed. Then he took out Rutger's armor and asked Lord Bai to please take care of these two. Bai Shen asked why Lin had ancient Rome's Vulcan set equipment. Meng Anwen mentioned hearing that the Vulcan set equipment was given to the Vulcan Knight last year. He asked Lin if he killed the Vulcan Knight. Lin told Meng Anwen that they were the ones who tried to kill Lin and Yi Yi in the dungeon first. Meng Anwen got really angry when he heard that, shouting about how they dared to touch their students in Shengxia territory. He heard that the Vatican has ways to resurrect their own people, so that Brat might still be alive. He was so angry that the whole group started to shake just from his anger. Bai Shen told Meng Anwen to hold it, and that he shouldn't be so hasty. Realizing his mistake, Meng Anwen calmed down. Bai Shen opened his inventory, took all the things Lin bought back, and said, All right, you should go back, Lin, and leave this matter to me. After so many years of inactivity, it seems my other title has been forgotten. Bai Shen is also known as Shenxia's slaughterer god, and only his name was enough to make enemies tremble in fear. Lin once heard that Lord Bai invaded Country H alone and killed two of the top three strong players there, almost achieving the feat of destroying a country alone. Bai Shen knows that he can't do this alone because ancient Rome is a strong nation. He has to bring Old Ning along as well. He looks at Meng Anwen and said, Old Meng, I'll have to trouble you with the tyrant necklace and the charging of this cooldown talisman. Meng Anwen told him that it's not a problem, saying that the moment the guy from the Vatican dared to treat Old Ning's granddaughter like that, they were doomed. Some time later in ancient Rome, when people were working, suddenly a bright light appeared in the sky. When people looked at the sky to check what it was, they were all shocked because a huge meteor burning in flames was coming towards them. It was too terrifying, and a boy said, Is that the magic of a divine mage? Could it be the descent of Vulcan, the god of fire? Suddenly, a priest saw two people flying beside that huge meteor. He shouted, They are enemies. If they are able to levitate, 
This means they're professionals who have passed the third job change. He told them to inform the Pope. Those people flying in the sky were Old Ning and Bai Shen, who were very angry. Old Ning shouted, Gubat, come out right now. Gubat is the name of Rome's Pope. 